Hey, do you wanna learn how to talk in motorcycle? You thought you could just use English like a freaking pleb? No, get yourself back to school because old Professor Yam is about to crack an egg of knowledge all over you. It is me, the shammy dude, loquacious cube, Yammy New, back once again to impart knowledge onto your tiny little squid brain. Motorcyclists have our own jargon that can be about as impenetrable as an unabridged version of the Odyssey, but thankfully, I am here to help you learn the ropes. It's easy to get confused when people start breaking into a bunch of buzzwords and meaningless sounding throat noises, but they all mean something, and we've got a ton to go over. That's right, enough preamble, let's just jump right in. Number one, it's the kinds of bikes. This one is super important because you won't want to show up to a bike night on a Ninja 400 and call it a super sport. Likewise, you wouldn't want to call it an adventure bike. By the way, this list is going to be filled with a lot of mini lists, so get your pens and pencils out. There will be a quiz at the end. Let's start out with super sport. These bikes are meant to go racing. They're completely covered in plastic fairings or body panels that help them slip through the air, have high revving engines, and produce face melting levels of power. Unless it's a 600, in which case it's only fast if you haven't ridden a real bike yet. Yeah, I said it's 600, boys, come on. Next up, we've got naked bikes. Back in the day, these were derived from super sports, but without all the plastic and slightly less potent engines tuned to make more torque. These are comfy bikes with handlebars instead of clip-ons. Moving on, you have ADV bikes, short for adventure. These are big bikes built to go on and off-road. They run anywhere from 300 to 1300 cc's and vary about as much in price. Mostly you see them parked in front of a Starbucks. Sport Touring, these are bikes for adventure riders who realize they're not about the off-road life. They're a blend of naked and ADV bikes with more road biased tires and tons of creature comforts for long distance rides. Next, you've got Cruisers, slow bikes for dentists who wanna play pirate on the weekend. Usually these are all V-twins, we'll talk about that in a second. Super comfy ergos, corner like a beached whale, and must play Freebird at all times from the dashboard or they won't run. Last up, touring bikes. These are your Goldwings, BMW, K, whatever's, and other massive motorcycles you might see in the garage of a 50-year-old chartered accountant. They're meant to be a sedan on two wheels and they'll cost about as much too. There are some others, but these are the main categories you'll encounter. Number two, the types of engines. There's a lot to cover here, so I'm gonna move fast. Singles or thumpers. These are one cylinder engines, put out a bunch of torque and not as much horsepower. Normally found in dirt bikes where low weight and smaller compact engines make a big difference. Next up, you've got twins, bike with two cylinders. They come in a few different configurations. You've got parallel twins where the cylinders are right next to each other. V twins where the cylinders go away from each other forming a V shape, unless you're in a Ducati and then they're L twins. And Boxers where the cylinders point in opposite directions forming a flat line between them. Twins tend to be very torquey but tend to not offer super high horsepower and are usually found in beginner bikes as well as some bigger intermediate bikes as well. Note, there are some twins that are massively inappropriate for a beginner. I'm thinking of something like our 1098 or Ducati. Gotta look at the displacement on some of these twins because they can put out some serious power. Moving on, there's triples or inline triples if you're feeling pedantic. There are three cylinders right next to each other these give you a very juicy mix of torque and power that are normally found in intermediate bike. Triples are my favorite engine format. I've owned like 400 of them at this point between my Daytonas and various giveaway bikes. You find these more often in naked bikes since Triumph broke my heart and stopped making the Daytona. And then there's inline fours, four cylinders in a line. Yeah, it's not that complicated. They provide the prototypical motorcycle sound when you think of a sport bike, a crotch rocket, and you hear it revving out in your mind. It's probably an inline four. Less torque down low, but lots of top end power, and the favorite of manufacturers pumping out super sports. The last main engine type is the V4, which makes it one of the most exotic sounds in motorcycling. It's like half a V8 crammed into a bike, or two V-twins stapled together, or a double L-twin, again, if you're a, du a Ducatista or something like that. Whichever helps paint a better picture in your mind for you. They're torquey, high revving with a ton of top end pull, and the sound is to die for. You see these in top the line motorcycles, like our giveaway to own click the links down below. Now, while you're spending all this time getting brought up to speed on biker lingo, let me remind you that you can't be a pro rider if you're rolling around without insurance. You'll take a little tumble, poke a hole in your fairings, and then be saddled with a lovely bill because you thought you'd be able to get away with it. Don't worry, your pretty little head though, Progressive has you covered. They're the choice of pros like me. 
Just kidding, I'm not a pro, I'm just a very dedicated student who happens to be kind of fast, but also not really. But that's besides the point. Progressive is our choice of insurance and has been for a long time. They're the expert's choice for motorcycling insurance. They've got a nationwide coverage and can help you tailor a policy to your needs. Click the link down below and get a free quote to see how much you can save on your motorcycle insurance, especially if you're a beginner rider and looking to see the different motorcycles you might pay for. A Ninja 400 might be really different to insure than a Duke 390. So go and check it out below. Only noobs pay that much, so don't be a noob. Click the link. Number three, tech acronyms. These are the first we might see on your dashboard and get confused by, so let's demystify some of them for you. First, ABS, that's the anti-lock brake system. Your car's had this forever, and in the last decade or so, it's become pretty much standard on bikes. It'll keep your wheels from locking up under hard braking. Next is TC or traction control. Again, something cars have had for a long time that's just starting to become standard on motorcycles. It helps keep your tires from slipping and changing road conditions or under heavy acceleration by modulating the power to the rear wheel. A more advanced version is lean sensitive traction control and ABS, which takes your lean angle into account for more precise control. Next up is WC or wheelie control. Sometimes you might call this lift control. On Aprilia's it's called AWC, on Harley's it's lift mitigation. But regardless of what it's called, it keeps the front wheel on the ground so you don't pop dank nooners when you don't want to or when you do, since keeping the wheel down is the whole point. LC can be launch control. This allows you to hold the throttle open and then just dump the clutch and the bike does all the work for you. If you have it, make sure you have it turned on before you try it, otherwise you're gonna have a really, really bad time. QS is also abbreviated for quick shifters. This allows you to shift up without using the clutch or letting off the throttle. Some quick shifters are equipped with an auto blipper, which is the same thing, but for downshifts. Last up is an IMU or an inertial measurement unit. This is like the brain of the bike, or at least it's inner eater. It's a fancy gyroscope that reads what the bike is doing in all directions. It's how it's leaning, how the front wheel is lifting, and that feeds into the rest of the bike system so they work more better. Number four, DOHC or dual overhead cam. This is the term attached to modern engines that work like they're supposed to, unlike Harleys with their weird gear driven cams that sit underneath the engine. Cams are what your engine uses to open and close the intake and exhaust valves, letting clean air in and venting out exhaust gases. They're all held in time by a chain and gears that must be precisely timed, otherwise things will go horribly wrong inside your engine. Things like a valve being open when the piston reaches the top of its stroke and then the two forbidden lovers kissing, releasing metal confetti inside your engine, turning it into a very expensive paperweight. Dual overhead cams allow for bikes to rev higher and make more power and are more reliable in all one fell swoop, so they get a thumbs up from me. Number five, squid. Ah, the squid. Best described as someone who rides a Jixer of any displacement, but let's be honest, it's always a K5 and not, but they're flip-flops, cargo shorts, and tank top. Actually, while we here at Yammy Noob like to mercilessly clown on Jixer bros, squid is more of a general term to refer to unsafe riding. Squidding knows no creed, nor color, nor gender, nor is it specific to any one kind of motorcycle. If you're a fully geared up, gimp wearing fast boy doing massive highway pulls at midnight on your leader bike, you're a squid. If you're a Harley pirate riding around in your chaps, no helmet, and a vest armored to live bright patches, you're probably a squid as well. If you pop wheelies, you're probably a little bit of a squid. If you have fun on your motorcycle, you're probably a little bit of a squid. Look, let's be real for a moment. Motorcycles are all about having fun. If that means breaking the rules a little here and there, then so be it. Remember, if you're gonna squid, just do it as safely as possible. Hit up a track or a drag strip or deserted parking lot, and remember to squid in moderation, my dudes. It's a lot like any other controlled substance. You really don't wanna overdo it. Number six, chicken strips, the instrument used by one squid to compare the length of their turgid member to another's. Yep, I said it. Chicken strips are basically just a dick measuring contest, so don't do it. But that's not gonna stop me from explaining it to you. Chicken strips are the section of unused rubber on the sides of your tire toward the edge. The idea behind chicken strips are that you are too afraid or chicken to lean the bike over far enough to scrub in the whole tire. The only problem with this is that it is a completely worthless and meaningless tool. I've seen adventure dads whoop ass on the street with chicken strips so juicy they had to fight the colonel for custody. I've also seen boneheads who go lean their bikes over in parking lots to get the scrub off their chicken strips, who then can't manage to get a knee down or post some decent laps at the track. Look, the only thing that actually matters in determining whether you're fast or good is a lap time at a racetrack. That's it. Also, turn like five laps at a track and your chicken strips will be completely gone anyways. Number seven, 
The cager, the enemy of every motorcyclist, filthy casuals who ride around in cars and don't want to risk life and limb for a daily dose of adrenaline. Why would someone not want to risk severe mangling, instead choose to ride around in a climate-controlled box with comfy seats and speakers? What's the deal with all those cumbersome safety features? You've got explosive gas bags that blow up in your face to keep you from smashing your skull into an immovable object, belts that keep you from sailing through a pane of glass and onto the asphalt, and no, not to mention the constant and dinging if you don't put it on. God, cagers are the most vile creatures on the planet. No, I'm just kidding. Cagers are just drivers. In fact, if you own a car and a motorcycle, at least 50% of the time you're a cager too. Just think about that the next time you complain about some cager cutting you off on your bike. And personally, I don't really ever use the word cager, so there's that. Number eight, tank slapper. The last thing a diner rider sees before they depart this mortal coil for daring to ride at highway speeds, this is the name given to a violent speed wobble from the front tire. This is usually caused by an imbalance somewhere in your suspension. Either you have too much load on the bike, your suspension settings are wrong, or maybe you set a wheelie down wrong, or maybe your tank just says Harley Davidson. I'm kidding, they've fixed these problems. Don't get mad, Harley people. Come on, you guys are always mad. Why are you so mad? Anyways, as you add more speed, a feedback loop is created where the faster you go, the more out of balance the system becomes, causing the front wheel to wobble from side to side, which in turn causes the handlebars to slap violently from side to side. Hence the name, Tank Slapper. If you encounter one, the solution is to roll off the throttle and let the bike sort itself out. It's caused by speed and bad suspension, so removing one problem will hopefully cause it to stop. Don't clamp down on the bars and try to stop them from wobbling. That'll just send all the energy from the front wheel to the back and then to you to the pearly gates. Remember guys, the bike wants to stay upright. Let it stay upright. Number nine, BOSA. If you plan on spending any real time around here, you need to know this one. The BUSA is short for Hayabusa, which is short for Hayabusa, motherfucker. Specifically, we're talking about a single motorcycle made by Suzuki since 1999 that's supposedly the fastest thing on two wheels. It's not anymore, and that's why you see them turboed. But back in the day, they were blisteringly fast. But let's be real, 175 horsepower is still 175 horsepower, so I guess it's still pretty quick. Yeah, it's not the 200 plus numbers we're used to seeing on super bikes nowadays. You normally hear the word Busa bandied about by gentlemen with bikes that are 14 feet long with tasteless paint jobs, chrome 300 section rear tires, and crippling credit card debt. Those are called Busa boys. Number 10, Desmos. The number one cause of Ducatis to tears, followed closely by self-satisfied tears of joy when you get to dunk on Aprilia owners for not being Italian enough. Desmos, or Desmodromic valves, were Ducati's special way of making their V-twin engines rev high enough to still not be competitive with Japanese inline fours. They're completely mechanically driven, meaning you can't get any valve flow, meaning that the valve is open when the piston comes up at a higher RPM, resulting in that forbidden love and engine confetti we talked about earlier. You Ducati is the only one making Desmo engines because for some reason the idea of a $3,000 service bill every 12,000 miles didn't seem to hold much appeal with the big four. I can't imagine why. Fact, a contronym is a word that's its own opposite. For example, if you seed the lawn, you add seeds, but if you seed a tomato, you remove them. Goodbye. Now, partner, I gotta tell you, it's real good seeing you here at the end of this year, Yam a Noob video. It's me, Cowboy Yam, aka Yosemite Yam, back at it once again. And uh, you click this video right over here, do me a little solid, okay? You made it to the end of the video, do me a little favor here, click this video, keep watching yourself some of this incredible Game of Noob content. It's pretty good.